So I'm going to briefly introduce my research I'm doing here at Chinfa about uh, urban resilience from a wider perspective, not just infrastructure but community resilience as well. Uh, can I use the keyboard? It's easy. First of all, I will uh, speak a little bit about resilience and how we understand resilience uh, here and. Uh, the framework that came up from this understanding of resilience and how we are trying to measure resilience from it. And then uh, a little mentioning a little bit about the indicators we are using right now. So uh, uh, resilience, we understand resilience not only as a process. We commonly see resilience, infrastructure resilience or community resilience. We try to, uh, we are trying to model it as a process that starts in a physical domain, let's say infrastructure as the main coping mechanism against natural disasters and the lack of resilience or in, in these infrastructure systems uh, allows the stress to travel through down to economy and community who also have their own coping or uh, their own uh, attributes capable of dealing with these stress which are in a different uh, which are in the infrastructure domain we commonly uh, we commonly see uh, uh, Attributes such as robustness, rapidity, resourcefulness, redundancy. Economy and community have different uh, ways of coping with this stress, which are more, more uh, soft, let's say, such as adaptive capacity, flexibility, and endurance or coping capacity. So we are going to talk about this in this presentation. This is the framework we, we came up with uh, after this uh, conceptual understanding of resilience, how Infrastructure is at the top of the priority for resilience against natural disasters and is the, the most wanted uh, resilience we are looking for. A perfect infrastructure, infrastructure capable of dealing with any, any type of hazard, but we know this is not possible. So we have to prepare for stress traveling down to economy and society. And then is when we have to also provide our economy and society with resources to deal with this stress. So how do we measure our city's overall capacity to deal with these natural disasters? This probably all of you know this uh, resilience triangle figure. It's well uh, published and is a, it's a staple in resilience research. Through uh, so this, we can measure uh, the the resilience or lack of resilience of the infrastructure. The area of the triangle gives us the lack or the loss of service provided by these infrastructures. So this lack of service travels through the through the city system in, in uh, providing stress to our economy and to our society. So Haynes he did some well uh, Haynes did some research about uh, the Leontief method of input output matrices and how does the input uh, the output from infrastructure travel through as input for our economy. And there is uh, matrices, all economies have these matrices of input output coefficients to measure how the, the output of, of different economy or different uh, sector of the economy affects the input of a, of a given sector. So using these coefficients, we can, we can uh, calculate the, the, the effect of this lack of service during a certain time how much does it affect a given uh, economic uh, sector of a city? And adding all of these sectors, we can come up with an overall figure for a city. With uh, this, and knowing how many, also from, uh, in our case, we are using the Chinese Statistical Yearbook, knowing how the distribution of, of employment in a city among the different sectors, we can come up with a stress figure, how much, how, much this uh, lack of service affect the economy, the GDP, and how does that tra translate into lack of job for our population. So at the end, what we are looking is to minimize stress on population on our communities. And in this case, through economic travels in, in, in the figure of lack of jobs, let's say, it can provide lack of jobs. On the other hand, infrastructure also provides a direct service to our population. We rely on electricity, we rely on transportation, we rely on water to carry our daily lives. How do we measure that? Well, in the case of community, it's not a straight relationship. We as persons, we have more of a, let's say, we have a 
emotional attachment to our cities. We are willing to cope with different levels of stress and we are willing to cope with different levels of lack of service and we are uh, willing to go through that. So we have to measure or to set different thresholds for this for this uh, per uh, performance degradation. So we are trying to set two different, we set two different uh, thresholds for this performance degradation. The first one, the yellow line means separates the, a completely negligible level of degradation from a perceivable degradation, let's say an impaired service, from a negligible degradation of the service to an impaired service. And the third one is a un, unacceptable service. The red line defines a, a level that our population won't be willing to accept. Let's say, for example, if you miss 10, 10, 10 minutes a day of electricity, that will have a real impact on your population. But if you miss 23 hours a day, that probably will have impact on some of your population in your city. And probably they won't be able to endure that for more than I don't know, a month, maybe, or a week. So you will start seeing out migration of your population when you add all of these services. So we define these three trenches, a trench where this is the resilience of our infrastructure can be equated to one, a middle trench where infrastructure goes from zero to one, and a lower trench that it's completely it's disastrous, it's, it's equal, uh, resilience is equal to zero. So, okay, so in this middle trench where infrastructure is, it's, uh, it's the great, it's acceptable, it's where our population, our community also, it's, it's still willing to stay in the city, but it can also organize themselves, can also use their own tools to cope with this stress, to this, with this uh, stress produced by natural disasters. So in this area of the, of the triangle is where we try to measure how resilience is, are, how resilience are over societies. In order to do so, we uh, reviewed a number of uh, resilience uh, indices. Uh, the, the United Nations Quota for Cities, or the 10 Essentials, I think they were mentioned before. That's one of the ones we reviewed, uh, Arab and another uh, ones from academia. And we tried to, uh, to review all the indicators using these indices and come up with a list of indicators that help us or that can help us uh, not predict, but assess or forecast the level of resourcefulness or adaptability over societies and economies have. So we went through these, through these uh, frameworks and we uh, gather all the indicators and uh, work with them, uh, reduce all the duplicated and the ones who weren't really sound for our framework that were more related with natural disasters or were, were indicators that weren't really publicly available. We tried to, we tried, we ruled out all the indicators that were more uh, quality, qualitative and were more uh, based on uh, personal opinions or uh, were more based on interviews. We tried to rely on just hard data, data that we could find in, in statistical databases. So we group them in these four dimensions, infrastructure, govern, governance, economy, and, so, and society. So we came up with this list of inf uh, indicators for infrastructure, for economy, for uh, society, and governance. Some of which we couldn't really, some of them uh, also we found were important for our uh, measurement, weren't really available in the case of China, we are working in, in the China context. So society and government. Uh, below these indicators, there are variables. And so we have the dimensions, variables, and indicators. Many of these indicators were, uh, were, uh, weren't available. So uh, we are still trying to find uh, more data for them, such as uh, affordability. We don't have uh, information for that, our data for that. Or, also power, we don't have uh, information about power in China. So gathering all these indicators and creating an index for uh, these, uh, these concepts can help us understand or predict how well a society can perform in the, in the face of 
of, of a disaster, let's say with an impaired level of service. For example, the more the the business environment, the more affordable uh, houses are, the less taxation, the level of GDP, all these things will positively impact infra uh, society performance in, in a stressful situation. So yeah, for social uh, was uh, one of the most uh, populated, let's say, sub-index, like the age, uh, percentage of people of disability in the population, gender, uh, income, uh, level of savings, all these things have a, a, a real impact. So although difficult to measure, it has a real impact and cannot be ruled out or neglected in, if we want to measure entire city resilience. So also for government, government is, a, is an active, uh, it's an active agent in, in the resilience process. So there are also some of these, the problem with these indicators is that many of them are subjective or quality, so it's difficult to find hard data for these indicators. So this is what we are doing right now, trying to come up with an index for these, all these indicators. So that's all in a nutshell. That's my research right now. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. So uh, let me just introduce some um, um, urban resilience metrics in different kinds of frameworks. We spend a lot of time trying to uh, collect and classify the uh, indicators and he's driving for he's working on the uh, data collection for those indices and uh, he's still trying to look for some methods to get uh, aggregate all those kind of uh, evaluation results so I think that's that's all for his work and I'm not sure is there any feedback input for his research I do and, have uh, a question here may I yes yes please Okay. Uh, my compliments for the presentation. It looks like you're you are having a very structured framework. Um, I haven't seen uh, that kind of a framework for measuring the impact of infrastructure resilience on the economy and on society, which is excellent. My question is: Is it your private thoughts, or is there some, let's say, uh, world expert consensus building towards? Having defined frameworks, having all those indices defined as something we all use. Excuse me, can you repeat? Sorry, we we had the window open, and if there is consensus on having these indices, uh, ideally in the world we should have a system that uses those indices and mm -hmm. the clustering and everything as the the approach that everyone in the world uses to to measure the resilience of a city. Now, what you presented, is that your personal thought, or is it the world consensus? Of course, it's not yet the world consensus, but how do we get there? Well, uh, on indices, there is a consensus. Indices are well used in different, uh, different uh, evaluate different issues, such as governability or uh, sustainability. They have been used widely before. Okay. My index has been... It, it's, it's built on previous indices. I don't, I don't know if I can call it a consensus, but it's used in industry. I mean, Arab has an index, United Nations has an index. Uh, in academia, there are various indexes. There are different bodies that have their own indices. But the, my, let's say, the, the thing I think is wrong right now with the indices is they don't really uh, prioritize infrastructure in the in the measurement. So infrastructure is the, the stepping stone, the main barrier against natural disasters. So the, it's crucial to give infrastructure a, a correct importance inside the index. Normally it's just one of many, many indicators, infrastructure. Yeah. Then an additional question, you use the term infrastructure. Do you realize that that term has different meanings in different parts of the world. If I talk to an American, then infrastructure will always include the building stock, uh, mm -hmm. both housing and non-residential. If I talk mm -hmm. to most of the Europeans, it will include things like uh, the roads and the tunnels and the bridges, but not the housing stock. Be very specific mm -hmm. about the, the meaning of the word. Well, in my case, infrastructure is anything that provides hard infrastructure, Anything built that provides service to our 
That's your definition, but in many European countries, they use a different definition. If mm -hmm. you use the term infrastructure, people in some European countries will think of roads, etc., everything to do with mobility, but not mm -hmm. the housing, not the building stuff. Mm -hmm. Be aware of the difference of uh, meanings. Okay, I, 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 I see what you mean. I mean, if they don't want to, but that's, in my case, I count building stock as infrastructure. Okay. It's part of it. Okay. So it's a, it's a, I think it's about the definition. It yeah. really depends, depends on the system because what we're doing this research, we're trying to incorporate different, many kinds of systems. We use type of, um, maybe a terminology called system of systems. So that can incorporate a lot of, you know, a housing system or we so-called infrastructure system, excluding housing system. And there are all many kinds of different, uh, I think, the layers. So, yes, thank you for your question. A any, any other? And uh, if um, no, we yes. can proceed. Hello? Yeah, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I just want to, to follow up on, on the last uh, point of discussion regarding the definition of intra infrastructure. And I think it's it's just it's just very interesting because this was actually uh, one of of the main arguments that are taking place at the moment in terms of uh, um, uh, actually developing the indicators for the Sindai framework for disaster risk reduction because critical infrastructure is there and it's also mentioned in the sustainable development goals but in terms of understanding exactly what the terminology is uh, from the perspective of the different uh, nations around the world it did come as mentioned now from the different actually uh, uh, i would say elements that are included within that terminology so so and it's still into debate that what is infrastructure and how are we going to develop a global indicator where all nations are going to report into it but still we do not have exactly the details in terms of the disaggregation of infrastructure. So, thank you. Yeah. I think that a, a consensus of definitions would be very, very uh, important and that, that requires a lot of discussions. Uh, particularly, we need to align all those, you know, different um, recognitions to the same word we call infrastructure. We have different understanding. Uh, I've worked in uh, CI for many years, and they develop metrics. They develop back and forth because all those metrics are used in you know, North America, and that the, the metrics has been discussed for many years. And um, yes, so we, we, we but but if a lot of people trying to define what is resilience, but um, uh, so far we do not have a very good you know definition, and that can be a very very uh, complicated or yeah. uh, yeah. time consuming and but we need Absolutely. to have a framework and st as a starting point and move, move yeah. forward i, I so appreciate i appreciate the framework that you have introduced in terms of i do remember one of the diagrams which have emphasized on the the time period of of a disaster for example you brought in the issue of the cut uh, the cottage in, in energy or, or, or electricity so, so I think this is one of a very good points that, that this research is bringing in and it did not really have been very, very well understood in, in, in for example, in Sindai because uh, they did mention disasters but it did not specifically outline what is going to be the period of reporting on a problem and understanding if the community is resilient enough. So putting that element of the time frame I think is a very excellent, uh, I would say, uh, adding from that research. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, All right. so, uh, this is Imbo. I have a question. For, for, uh, for, uh, thank you for the uh, great presentation. Um, my question uh, is related to the comments. Um, for civil, in, for infrastructure, I guess, from my, uh, my understanding is that the infrastructure has the physical infrastructure and also have cyber infrastructure. If we define uh, services as a way to say, okay, everything providing service, uh, it's an it's a infrastructure for supporting a city, then um, is there any like a, uh, because I, I, I just uh, skimmed through the PowerPoint and I'm not sure, maybe you already did this and you already uh, classify cyber infrastructure and then physical infrastructure. And from the cyber dimension, we also talk about what kind of data is useful for 
for providing what kind of service. And then from uh, under the umbrella of a service, and then we, we have the physical world and the virtual world. Is that something uh, uh, in this framework? Well, uh, I'm not, this framework is about how to measure, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a, with a, I mean, the framework is a product itself. I'm not trying to delimitate what is infrastructure, what is not, what defines physical from virtual, from cyber, from so, uh, social infrastructure. I mean, the, 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 the contribution of my research is how to, how to organize or how to, uh, measure the entire process of, of resilience let's say yeah. it's not about i mean i'm not I'm, i haven't gone into that i haven't gone into listing all the infrastructures and delimiting like clearly delimiting what is one infrastructure what is the other infrastructure that's not something i've been looking into yeah actually i, really, uh, I agree i agree uh, I, I agree what you said before it's uh, infrastructure is anything uh, can providing service to the society and uh, so that's why I, I am thinking about uh, uh, maybe you already have a classification about that. No, no, that's not something I've been, I've been I've tackled so far. I don't know if I would, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but may I make a remark on that? The, the goal of this CIB commission, or the focus, is on urban infrastructure. And mm -hmm. whether cyber infrastructure is part of infrastructure or not, Cyber, infra, cyber uh, uh, structure infrastructure is very important for urban infrastructure. So in the, the commission scope, it has to be included as something that's becoming more and more relevant. Okay. 